Why are we so behind everyone else? Have you ever noticed the U.S. is usually more behind when it comes to heating and air technologies? I used to make the joke years ago that we in America love our gas guzzling cars and our ducted air conditioners in comparison to other countries. But I wanted to do a video on this because I've noticed that some folks here in America don't realize how behind the times we actually are. And in a lot of cases, we're able to look at other countries and kind of see what the future is going to look like here before it gets here. It's a snapshot of things to come in some cases. So I'm recording this video here in 2023. We just had the latest SEER 2 ratings come out and we're seeing all the manufacturers deal with that differently. But ultimately the DOE has said that these systems need to be a, above a certain efficiency. And of course, introducing SEER 2 now to the market has affected this as well. Now, this is not something I monitor as close when I look at other countries, I don't know what their minimum SEER or SEER 2 ratings need to be. What I do think is you're seeing other countries, we're going to talk about technologies in just a second, but you see other countries that don't even introduce these inefficient options that we have available to us in America. And some of these options are, you know, blatantly open with, hey, this is not a, a good option when it comes to efficiency. But in some cases, we don't care, right? We have heating and air guys across the country today, even today, that will still fight you or argue with you and even comment on this video if you were to point out that a certain system is inefficient in comparison to another. They like to point out things that, you know, to them seems to make more sense to install something less efficient. But that's a whole nother argument here. Another thing that we see that we're a little behind the mark on, again, during the making of this video, we're starting to see the phase out of 410A refrigerant. The AIM Act was enacted a few years ago. We've started that phase down. We're currently in the middle of it during the recording of this video. And we're seeing certain states and our national government trying to speed that process up a little bit. And just recently, they named the date of when some of these systems will be no longer available with 410A refrigerant. And of course, they're looking at things like GWP, which is global warming potential, and so on. So again, we're a little behind the mark on this. We're a little behind the ball. We're seeing other countries that have phased out 410A refrigerant years ago, and we are just now looking at introducing the refrigerant that they are now thinking of phasing out in their own countries. We're just now introducing some of those refrigerants to the American market. So again, that is just obvious that we are a little behind the mark. Of course, we touched on it a second ago, but there are technologies that here in America that we're a little behind the mark on as well. We've caught up a little bit on some of this stuff, but I remember just a few short years ago that the duckless mini split market was still pretty small. We still had Americans that didn't quite understand what it was or what they were looking at purchasing. And I would even say that it's fair to argue today that I have customers that I have to kind of educate them on what the advantages of a ductless system provides in comparison to what they're used to. This also touches back on what we were talking about a moment ago with heating and air contractors. They want to install basically the same technology that we were installing decades ago. Single speed systems with a box and the unit looks relatively the same, maybe a little larger because of efficiency ratings, but for the most part, it's the same stuff. And so because of that, the technology industry will sometimes call backward compatibility because of that backward compatibility and having a consumer that is not quite on board with the newer technologies, you see these newer technologies coming out. You see things being introduced to the market and things that are changing the industry drastically, but then you still have a large sector of the market, a large pocket of people that are like, nope, I don't care how great that is. I'm still gonna stick with what I'm used to and what I think is better for one reason or another. Right or wrong, that's not what this video is about. I'm just pointing out how there are other countries that are further along in some of these things than we are. And then finally, there are brands that are introduced overseas. Now that can be argued both ways. We have some brands or companies that are located here in the US and don't export to other countries, but I think you see more of that in other countries than even here. Especially when you're talking about some of these companies that are working on newer technologies and things like that in Europe. But even today, I've got guys that are commenting on my videos telling me how great some of these brands that are being imported into our country are when these brands weren't even available to us five or 10 years ago. Well, again, some of these brands have been around for a long time. There's one brand that you know is looking to disrupt the market and they're trying to really make themselves a name over here with some of the products they're importing 
and making available to folks when just a few short years ago, they, as far as I knew, you could only buy ductless units with that brand on them. Across the board, I think we all know the elephant in the room is why are we behind the ball on some of this stuff? Genuinely, in most cases, it's because of money. It's because, you know, somebody has a patent on this refrigerant so that, you know, they want to get as much money out of that or whatever. Now, you may argue that, but to me, the proof is out there. When you see certain things not being introduced to certain markets or things like that across the country, I think it's safe to say that it's usually based on money. And unfortunately, that goes all the way up to, you know, the highest powers that be, if you will. This is not a conspiracy thing or anything like that, but I think it's probably safe to say that there are people at the highest levels of the parts of government, I'm not going to mention any particular agencies, but parts of our government that are at very least having lunch with some of these manufacturers, maybe some of these CEOs, and having a little bit of a conversation, lobbying, or whatever you want to call it, on where things are going. It's all about money. It's always all about money. It's why there are certain foods that we're allowed to eat here in America that we know are probably not good for us, and they're outlawed in all these countries across the world. Now, there are people that'll say, well, I should have the freedom to eat whatever I want. That's not this argument. The argument is there are folks that are allowed to put certain things in your foods and they know that they cause this disease or cause that problem and they're allowed to put it in there in some cases without even telling you that they're doing it. So that's more of what this argument's about. It's all about money and that's usually what it's all about. So anyway, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Is there anything you think we're behind the eight ball on when it comes to other areas of the world? Or is there anything that you think we're above the curve on? I'd love to hear about that. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.